It's time to hit the road and discover Texas with Annie Studebaker. Get ready to travel deep into the heart of the Lone Star State, meeting friendly folks and exploring fascinating places. Experience a way of life like nowhere else in the world. As we uncover the rich history and culture of Texas, discover adventure, discover excitement, discover Texas with Annie Studebaker. Have you ever wondered what lurks under our beach waters? Well, I have. Jump aboard and experience the thrill of deep sea fishing, along with wade fishing, as Mark and Bonnie Brown take us on an adventure in the waters of Port Mansfield. Then later, get ready for a growly stomach as Bonnie Brown demonstrates how to make delicious fish tacos. Ready? Let's see what's out there. Today, we're going to be fishing for red snapper. The daily bag for this fish is four per person and has to be a minimum of 15 inches in length. Red snapper may be taken using pole or line, but I have learned that it is unlawful to use any kind of hook other than a circle hook when using natural bait. We're going to say today if it's fishing or catching. Say there's two different, two different ways there. Some days it's just fishing and no catching, but we're, we're going to hope it's catching today. Yes, definitely. I see the difference now. Okay, tell me what we're going to do first. Well, we're going to catch some red snapper. That's Ooh. that's the plan. We got the bait cut. We got a couple rods baited. I'm going to ease up to a rock, and we're just going to drift that rock. Okay. Okay. And then the rock's down on the bottom, and it's 60, 70 feet here, so you got to let it let it go down to the bottom. So let me kind of circle around here a minute okay. and we'll we'll find them, hopefully. Okay. All right. And then we'll catch one. What okay? are we using for bait? We're using sand trout and mullet for okay. bait. Good okay, good deal. Okay, good deal. What you're gonna do, we're gonna let her down. Dave, you can let yours down too. And see how I'm, I've got to thumb this oh, so you don't get wow. a backlash, okay? okay. So I'm, I'm letting her down to the bottom, okay. okay? And we're going to watch and see if we get, hopefully we'll get a bite. Okay. Let her down, down, and watch your tip. See how it's, it's, see how it's getting a bite right there? Do it! Oh, he's going to catch something. Oh boy, look at that, get Dave. Woo, Dave. Dave got him one. Get that line up. Whoa, that's a snapper. What do I do? Quickly? Nice one. Here you go. Nice snap. Isn't it pretty? That's a beautiful fish. Isn't it? Good eating fish too. He's the fisherman. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. We might just, we just might save him to eat, right? Yes, sir. That wow, that is huge. Isn't it pretty? <gasps> is that a keeper? Oh yeah. I gotta catch something. You go, girl. My goodness, that's tough. Look at her. She doesn't have a belt. Oh my goodness, this is a good spot. Oh, look at that baby. <gasps> Bonnie, that's awesome. My oh my. Yeah, buddy. Another one? Yep, 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 yep. Oh my goodness <laughs> gracious, they put up we a We need fight. a fish, Annie. Well, good grief, Mark. Now it's taking out mine. That is big one. Oh, Dave. Oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding. I can't help it. What do I do? He's really going. This is a big one. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> wow. Get him, girl. They, they put up a fight. This is interesting. Goodness. Uh oh. Come on, baby. Ooh, got a big fish, I think. Come on, uh -oh. real. It, come on, real. Come on, come on, come on. It's still on there. Oh. Oh wow, Dave, that is 
Abnormally big, good grief. <laughs> It got, it got away. off, Annie. Dang it! Look at that. Nothing. Here. Oh. Son <laughs> of a gun. That's it. Got away, darn it. <laughs> oh, God. Let's have that other pole. Oh, my gosh. This <laughs> is big. Oh, my. Oh. I can't Hang on, girl. Good grief. I couldn't do this for a living. This is too much work. <laughs> Just you help her there, Bonnie. I'm getting my workout today. Wow. I'm not going to let you go. You know, I paid attention. Ooh. You showed me how to do come that. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't fight, don't fight. Yankee, there you go. Oh, my goodness. You got him, girl? I don't know. Well, sure hope so. <laughs> nice fish. Oh, my goodness. That's your first Yay! red. That's your first red snapper. My goodness! Back up yes, a little. It I'll is. grab it for you. Woohoo! I caught that. <laughs> that is there super awesome! Woo! Finally. First. Okay. Watch an Woo. angle. That's 22 inches. Woohoo! 22 inches. I like that. All right. <laughs> Okay. I can't compete with Dave's 32. Uh-oh. We continued fishing that day until everyone caught their limit of four red snapper. I really enjoyed deep sea fishing that day, being that it was my first time. Thanks to Mark and Bonnie Brown, it turned out to be an exciting and educational experience for me. Up next, we learn how to fillet a red snapper as well as a cooking demonstration with Bonnie Brown. All right, it's real easy, filleting a fish. Always lay the fish flat, starting off, and, let, and head toward you. Pull this fin up, and I always do a little, a little sideways with my knife, a little back toward the head, and you make a cut down to the, to the backbone right there, okay? So I made a cut all the way through to the backbone. Then I slit the stomach down by the anal fin, so you've got two cuts. You've got a cut here and a cut all the way down to the tail. And then we're just gonna take the knife and we just, we're just kind of feel the knife, lay it flat, and you're just gonna ride and cut through that bone at the same time, the rib bone. And just come all the way through to the tail, leave the skin on, flip it over. There's your fillet. We're just gonna cut the skin off right now, okay? So you got your fillet off right there. We're gonna debone it. So we're gonna take the rib cage out. We're gonna come down here, make a little cut here. Then you've got, you've got a deboned fillet right there. Beautiful piece of meat for table fare. Then we're going to do the other side the same way. We lay it flat, cut through to the, to the tail, come through. We're going to ride the rib, ride the backbone all the way down, flip it over. Another fillet, back, shoot. Deboned, there's your fillet right there. We're gonna make a quick cut. You're gonna cut the throat out. Cut it like you're gonna gut the fish, cut that off. And then you cut on each side of the, the uh, fin here, right here. We're gonna leave that fin on. So we're gonna cut right here, cut through that bone, flip it over. Cut through right in front of this other fin. Can lay it out flat for you. Need a serrated, serrated knife to do this. Just 
slid it down to the skin. There's a few bones in here, so you just carefully cut it to the skin, take my other knife, and then I'm just gonna fillet this throat off right here. You've got your throat. I actually get two pieces out of this. Right there. Go to the next one. <laughs> I have a little charter business. Uh, it's Mansfield Charters. I, I do it as a part-time basis, okay? There's a, a, a probably 35 guides out at Port Mansfield. And of course, some of them are, you know, of course, full-time guides. I, I, I have other businesses that I take care of, but, but I enjoy guiding part-time. Uh, and uh, uh, mainly, you know, sometimes during the week, but mainly on weekends and, and holidays and stuff like that. So it, it's a, it's a fun part-time business. If, if you are a novice uh, and haven't fished, a lot of times they, uh, a guide can provide the, the equipment, of course the boat and uh, bait and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, a, a lot of these guides and, and, and myself, I try, we try to teach people how to fish and, and from you know little kids on up to adults if, if they haven't haven't fished any and and teach them how to operate rod and reel kind of like we did today and learn how to cast learn how to bait the hook uh, learn how to present the bait um, and uh, uh, so there there is an art to it and and uh, I, I I'll be the first to admit I don't know everything and I'm my uh, there's other guys that have specialties in certain areas, fly fishing and, uh, and some artificial type baits. But uh, all of them, or most of them, I would say, or all of them are willing to teach people how to fish and, and how to go use the right techniques. And, and so that can be fun to learn for the, for the novice fisherman. I'm, I'm blessed that I I'm married to uh, a wife that uh, enjoys fishing and tolerates my habit of fishing. And uh, we enjoy doing it together. And actually, she's a, a good uh, angler. Uh, she won the Texas uh, uh, Ladies Angler for the state of Texas uh, two years, three years ago. And uh, which was quite an accomplishment. It was a statewide tournament, and I was proud of her for that. And it was a five-month tournament that uh, that, she, that she won. Uh, but we enjoy fishing together, and uh, we have a lot. We, you know, I, I wish <laughs> I wish there was more time where we could fish together. But but when we do get to fish together, uh, she outfishes me sometimes, and and. Uh, that and she kind of rubs it in on me, you know. So anyway, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> that's funny. Hi everyone, I'm here with Bonnie Brown. Her and her husband took us out fishing, and we caught a bunch of red snapper. But today she's going to teach us how to make delicious fish tacos. Tell me what we're going to be doing here. Okay, Annie, we're going to be using two different uh, types of breading. Um, panko is always um, part of this recipe because it adds a lot of crisp coating to the fish. And zatarains are, are the fish fry. Anything that has corn flour, even the tamale flour works very well. And um, your viewers will want to stay away from white flour with fish because it burns very easily. So corn flour is much better to um, cook the fish. So what I normally do is that I pour about half panko and about half zatarains or any corn flour based. If you want to use seasoned, it's fine. 
or you can use the plain and season it yourself. Mm -hmm. I use the plain here. so I can control the amount of salt in it. I'm using pink Him Himalayan sea salt, which is very healthy. You notice she doesn't measure anything, so she's good. <laughs> I've but, been doing this a long time, but the we'll, recipe's on the website. Yes, we'll do that. We'll the, put that on the website. Yes, we'll have the amount. So this is green pepper, just because I was out of freshly ground black pepper, but white pepper is fine or any kind of pepper. We're gonna mix that together so that it's pretty well blended. Mm, okay. And then we're going to, it's about half and half is what so I normally use. what do you think use. makes it crunchy, the? The panko, the panko is, right. is the, same, uh, the same ingredient that's used in Japanese restaurants. It's been used in Japanese restaurants for a long, long time for tempura. So mm -hmm. um, it's the thing that gets the, sh when you buy shrimp, like coconut shrimp and and different uh, types of very crisp fish. It's the thing that makes it so crisp. Oh, you delicious. cannot get the same, um, you can't get the same type of crispness with just corn flour or cornmeal. So she's added uh, low fat buttermilk, yum. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. And the buttermilk is just uh, to get the, and I'm going to cut this filet crosswise because it's quite thick. And for fish tacos, if you're using regular size corn tortillas, uh, you want your fish to be rather thin. Good deal. So, yeah, that's much thinner and it'll cook faster. That's good. Mm -hmm. You can get more out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I'm going to cut it in strips about the size of the corn tortilla. And you can cut it across the grain, which probably makes it stick together better, or or just in little strips. And I'm using um, small, regular size corn tortillas, but now they have started making the larger ones as well. Now there's, uh, and most fish have a dark uh, place in them and you can cut that out. It's a little strong when you mm -hmm. heat it. Especially if the fish has been in the freezer. It does, it is the thing that makes fish taste more fishy. But what Mark has done over the years has learned to do is to vacuum pack the fillets as soon as he catches them. We used to um, we used to freeze them in water, and uh, they did last a long time. But they take up so much more space in Don't the freezer. Don't they get mushy when you freeze them in water? Trout do, but uh, snapper snapper hold up pretty well to any oh. kind of freezing. This is just uh, makes them last longer. Vacuum packing, you're saying? Vacuum well, that's packing, interesting. Yes. I'm going to have to try that. Yeah. I've never tried that. And Mark's got a commercial vacuum packer because we do, uh, you know, save a lot of fish in the freezer. Well, you He's much better at cutting fish than <laughs> I am. So we've got some strips here and we're just going to soak them in the buttermilk. Now, if the fish has been in the freezer for a while, you might want to soak them for, say, 10 or 15 minutes. Buttermilk will take the fishy taste out of fish. Oh, interesting. And if you don't have buttermilk, you can use a cup of regular milk, low fat or, or, or regular, um, and you can put a teaspoon of vinegar or a teaspoon of lemon juice for every cup of milk, and that will make buttermilk that you can huh. use yourself. My patient. son drinks that stuff right out of the bottle. <laughs> I do too. Oh my goodness, I, really like I never got used to that flavor, but when it comes to frying, that looks good. I am going to use some uh, coconut oil today. I, I normally use half olive oil, a good extra virgin olive oil. Uh, H-E-B and Walmart both have it. Go. Thank you. And uh, I normally use a little bit of butter. If you use butter by itself, it burns very easily. And I use unsalted butter because salted butter also burns more easily. So I'm gonna turn this on medium high so that the coconut oil and um, and the butter can begin to melt. There's a chart in the recipes that shows various toppings for fish tacos. Um, you can be creative. Wow. This is simply... So colorful and delicious. This is simply broccoli slaw out of a package. HEB and Walmart both carry it. And um, I have added to it about two tablespoons of cilantro, two or three. I, I like a lot of cilantro, sometimes I put more. I have also added uh, two green onions, chopped all the way to the end, the white part and the green part. And I have used a small strip of red bell pepper. 
the last thing that we're going to add to it, which can't be added till the very end, and this is not on the recipe. I don't know how I forgot that because this is a key ingredient, is um, Avocado. avocados. Yummy. So this has to go in at the very last, right before the salad is served. And this can be served as a side salad or as the topping for the fish tacos. But the avocados have to be ser added at the end because they will turn. Now what I have found, um, if I make this, ahead, this part can be made ahead. But without the dressing, because once the dressing goes on, the salad starts to wilt a little bit. It's not as crunchy, definitely. Exactly. Yeah. So if you if you know if you like it a little softer, like these uh, pieces of broccoli slaw, and the reason I use broccoli slaw is because it stays crunchy. But some people prefer a softer salad. So um, if that's the case, then you can put the dressing on earlier, let it sit half a day or so. Okay. So we're going to just put this chopped avocado on the salad. And I'm just going to use about a half right now. And the dressing is, I use the Simply Organic brand. Sometimes I use Good Seasons, which is available at both stores. Now these are real good. I've tried them before. Excellent. The secret for the taste of the dressing is rice vinegar. And this is seasoned rice vinegar. It has a little bit of sugar in it. You can achieve the same thing by using any, any kind of vinegar that's not so tart, like white vinegar is very tart, but apple cider vinegar works, um, wa red wine vinegar works, any type of good vinegar. Yeah, this is not as tart, as strong. I right. Like, I like to use that, some of my pickling so, too. That's what's in the dressing, just, and so I it, use half. It's already made it, that's great. I use half olive oil and half canola oil if I uh, use all olive oil, it tends to weigh down the salad. So <clears throat> if you use part canola oil, or you can use vegetable oil too. I just uh, like to use the canola more so than the vegetable oil because I, I, um, I think it's a little bit healthier. Mm -hmm. so, that looks really good. So we toss this, and this is a great side for lots of things. We use it for sometimes for um, grilled fish, we use it for steak sometimes. We use it for barbecued chicken sometimes. That looks um, good. And you can use regular salad as well. Just chop it, chopped lettuce, chopped tomatoes, chopped green onions or purple onions, any of those things. Toppings can include uh, mango salsa, black bean salsa. All of those lists are on the, on the recipes that I sent to you earlier. Okay. So now we're going to coat the fish and fry it. <clears throat> and it's just been sitting a few minutes here, so, but it's very fresh fish, so really you don't have to use buttermilk, but it does get the panko to stay a little bit better. And notice that I'm pressing it into there because panko, because it's coarse, it tends to, um, it tends to not stick very well, unless it's got uh, some buttermilk or some yeah, milk. Yeah, the, the buttermilk helps yeah. a lot. So this is on medium, oops. That's no, okay. <laughs> this is on medium heat, now it is a little bit messy. So if you can get pretty close to your stove top, then you have a better chance of not making a mess. Um, some people say that messy cooks are good cooks, so <laughs> I should qualify as a very good cook then. <laughs> because I'm Me very too. Good. <laughs> now, there's all different kinds of oils that can be used in this. Um, avocado oil can be heated to a very high temperature and still maintain its nutrition. Olive oil does not maintain its nutrition as well when no, it's heated. No, it's real hot. That's true. Coconut oil yeah. can be heated to 500 degrees and still maintain its nutritional yeah. value. I've used pecan oil. <clears throat> I've used uh, peanut, course, peanut pe oil. Mark deep fries fish in peanut oil, yeah, and it so prevents burning too. Yeah, I do too. So there are many, many grapeseed oil is great. There are many, many kinds of oils that can be used for this, and varying it just varies the taste a bit so that uh, families who eat a lot of fish like we do, then you get to have a little bit different um, flavor. So you're not eating the same, same old, same old flavors all the time. Now I Tell am, me what you did, what you've done with this. Okay, with the, with the tortillas, I sprayed them with 
I sprayed them actually today with olive oil, but since we're using coconut oil, we could spray them with coconut spray. And I turn them over in the pan twice, and then I form them into a taco shape, and then they stay that way. Um, well, it's good. best if you can keep them in an keep them open in an oven so that they stay crisp. If they're closed up in foil, which I had to bring them over in foil, they do get a little um, tough, you know. So you want to do your your tortillas at the very end, you know, toward the very end. And the other way to do them is just normally so that they stay soft. Yeah. But I do uh, always, almost always heat them up in the frying pan. They just have a better flavor than if you heat them in the oven. My husband heats up corn tortillas. He sprays each one and puts them in a paper towel or in a towel in the microwave and they are awesome. That's how he likes them, soft tacos. So you could do that too. So this, as soon as I have turned these over, I just happened to have limes today because my neighbor gave me some from her tree. I, mm. I would normally use lemon, but lemon or lime is, is good with fish. So I, as soon as I've turned them over, I'm squeezing them with lemon or lime. Great, great. So we want to drain these on uh, once they're well cooked well, I mean, brown, light brown. And I find with fish, especially with the panko, it starts to come off if you turn it too much. So you want to try to just brown it on one side, turn it, brown it on the other side, and then be done with it, as opposed to like with chicken or one other, any, some of the True. other meats to keep turning and turning them. This one didn't. And it smells delicious. <laughs> What's on the edge? So the way you can tell when it's done is right here on the end, you can see it, see, mm -hmm. it flakes yeah. and it's solid white. If yes, fish definitely. is not done, it stays sort of a pink color, light pink color. And see, this is gonna break because it's well done, and I'm going to flip that one over because it didn't get very brown. But with fish tacos, you can have small pieces, you can have long pieces, you can have chunks. Um, you know, there's no set way because basically it doesn't have to look pretty because it's going to go on the bottom of the taco. And, and it's going to look pretty no matter what. Yeah, it's not going to be gonna sitting on a, yeah. yeah, it's not going to be sitting on a plate by itself. Okay, okay. so for the fish tacos, there's all different kinds of toppings, as I mentioned earlier, but the easy ones are the ones that are already prepared. So this is a sriracha mayonnaise, and this is called Yum Yum, and I happen to get both of these at uh, Walmart here, And um, but hmm. there's all different kinds of prepared sauces, tartar sauce, you could use a cocktail sauce. Um, I love the sriracha hot sauce. So yeah, this gives yeah, it a little probably bit, really good. I'll have to try that. A little bit of a, um, a little, you know, spicy taste. Great. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off, and I'm going to put these right here. And kind of stick these in there to heat them up a little bit flat. There we go. Awesome. <clears throat> so then we can uh, use. This is just a Mexican cheese blend that comes from. HE's craft. Uh, it comes from H E B. So but there's all different kinds of toppings that you can use. You can use cheese, not use cheese. It's just depends on personal taste. True. Pico de gallo, um, chopped up um, fresh jalapenos, uh, chopped up serranos. Mm. There's all different How hot kinds is this? Of. It's it's a little bit spicy, but I I really oh, like goodness. we really like it. So So then once the tortillas are heated up. And there's, you can use corn tortillas, I mean, I'm sorry, flour tortillas also, but uh, we're gluten intolerant in our family, so we always opt for corn. And there's something about corn and fish together. I was just going to say that. They, I love corn tortillas with fish. Yeah, it really... Um, but of course, my nephews and nieces, flour tortillas. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple of pieces of fish... I'm going to put the slaw. I should get another there. little plate. What do you need? Yes, this. Oh, okay.
What we usually do is we put several sauces out and let everybody put their own. Mm. Okay, we'll put there it right go. here. So the great thing about fish tacos is if you don't have a lot of fish, for instance, if you've only caught one or two fish, this is a great way. You can feed several people with just, um, with just a little bit of fish this way. You can open that yum yum sauce. If somebody doesn't like hot, this one is not spicy. That looks good. We're going to have enough for the cameraman. <laughs> not that one. <Yeah. laughs> Sides could include uh, black beans, pinto beans, Spanish rice, the same things that you would serve with um, regular tacos. Um, or none, or, or no sides. It's, it's kind of a full meal deal, just like this. Are we ready to try one? Which one do you think I should try? <laughs> I think this one looks pretty good right oh, here. Okay. <laughs> you, get, you get one too. <laughs> to eat my own cooking? <laughs> yes, you do. Mmm. Mmm. The fish with a slaw. Which sauce was this? That's delicious. It, it is. Is it a little? That's it's the, this one. The yum yum sauce. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. I recommend it. It. Um, it's good. It's not hot. It's very mild. Delicious. I'm gonna finish my taco. Mmm. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? Your husband loves you. Y'all go fishing all the time. That's the thing. I've Which been married to Mark for almost 40 years, and um, we started dating in college. So, and I've always liked to cook. I've been cooking since I was six years old. Mm. So the the challenge for me has been to come up with different recipes for fish because we eat it so much, mm -hmm. and not only for our, our guest and entertaining to ha come up with different ideas, but also mo mostly for us, so we don't get tired of eating it the same way all the time. One of my favorite things with uh, Red Snapper is Red Snapper Veracruz, and um, that's simply putting it in the oven, and I sometimes Onions. use prepared pico de gallo oh, wow. with green olives, because green olives are the, is the uh, signature thing for Snapper Veracruz that makes it very different and very, um, and that's what makes it Snapper Vera, Red Snapper Veracruz. So I put the filet in the oven um, with the, the same thing, butter, a little butter, mm -hmm. a little olive oil. I put prepared, usually put prepared pico de gallo mm -hmm. on top and then chopped green olives and then leave it in the oven until it flakes and then you bring it out and you serve it with oh, rice. Oh, that sounds delicious. Like rice that has cilantro tossed in it. And that's very, very good too. Mark deep fries it sometimes. Uh, we've just done all kinds of things with, with fish. Well, Bonnie, it's been great having you here, Thank teaching you. us how to make these delicious tacos. Yeah. So we'll, po we'll put her recipe on our website as well, and we'll show it on our show, which is coming up soon. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We did a little weight fish today and had a little fun and and I think what we tried to do today we had a northeast wind and uh, uh, we had a rain yesterday so things were a little bit out of out of sorts but uh, the water was okay and we we started out early this morning and and uh, we were going to do three things we were going to fish with live shrimp live croaker and gold spoons and I think we did all three of those and uh, we were pretty successful at all three. Wow, I have never seen that. <laughs> Ooh. This is the old style fishing, okay. but it worked. Yeah. All the fish I'm going to catch. You're going to 
get out? Yeah, you ready for me? I'd, I'd sit down right up there. And just chill. Oh, Danny, are you ready for this? <laughs> I'm gonna look ridiculous. Oh! It's kind of cool. cool. Kind of? How deep is it? Just tell me. Uh, let me. Let me get in first. Okay? No, no, I don't want it to look like a ninny. I'm gonna do this. Here I go, Danny. You get this? After I got in the water, all I could think of is what may be lurking beneath my feet. I was also amazed at how the water temperature changed at times when we moved from one location to another. I had to be very careful when maneuvering on foot. I'll tell you one thing, the ground was not leveled. They think it's a fish, uh, okay. pop, you know, chasing the bait, so you want to pop it like that, okay? okay. So, now, if it goes under... Is this a left-handed reel? Yeah, they're all left-handed on those spinning reels, okay? So you want to... There you go. I couldn't wait to catch my first fish. I just hoped it was a big one. I couldn't cast as far as Mark, but as you can see, the more I fished, the better I got. Steady and real, okay. and real fast, real okay. hard, real fast. Pull your pole up. up. You gotta hold it up. If you let it straight out, then he's gonna break the line. There you go, add a girl. Then you put it in here, right? Put it, put it wherever you need to. Yeah, that's easier. Come on, don't give him no slack, man. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yes, don't, don't exactly. cut him. You know, you heard the old expression, "Don't cut him any slack," <laughs> and don't oh. jerk back and forth because every time you jerk back and forth. That gives him a little slack. slack. Okay, oh, come on. It's coming. You're going to have to back up, man, because he's going to come around you. So you're going to have to back up this way if you can. I'll try to get out of here. Just try to stand still. We're going to come in. We're going to try to stay in the back of it. It's right here. Come it's on. a big one. Oh, my. Wow. What? What do I Good do? Job. Good job. Oh, I'm my gonna God. Help you. Oh, my. Help you net it. Okay. Come on. Let him play out. Oh my goodness, we cannot move this baby. Wow. Oh my, it is a heavy one. I know, but you want to let him, you want to let him take line if he needs to, okay? Okay, you're going to go uh, Oh my, oh my. Oh, it's a oh my gosh. It won't come back, it comes this way. Because he's taking line. Okay. Hold up. 
fish. Oh, wow! Good job, girl! <laughs> I'm so excited! Supper! Wow, now we. <laughs> I love it! Mission accomplished, uh, huh? Now, what do we do? Okay, now you're gonna hold my pole for a minute. Just stick it in that hole. Alright, okay? got it, yes. You wanna keep it? Yes! Can we? Sure. Legally? No, oh, he's legal. <gasps> That's the fit! Isn't that a pretty one? I got that! I'm so excited. Me too. Oh my gosh. Put it on your stringer? Yeah, you bet. Should I? Yeah. Oh, it's your fish. Okay. What a beauty. Okay. Now, I always string them before you take them off because they might get they away. They might get away. Okay, so we're going to string them in the lip and then he, he, stays, oh. he stays alive. Can't hurt me though, right? They don't hurt. Tagging red drum. Immediately upon retaining a fish, number one, remove tag from license and use entire tag. Number two. Fill in all information spaces on front of tag. Number three, cut out day and month. And four, attach tag with a string or wire to the narrowest part of the tail, just ahead of the tail fin. As the day grew longer, and with plenty of sunscreen, we continued to fish, catching red drum, black drum, and spotted sea trout. What a thrill! Mark taught me new things about fishing like casting and baiting and especially how to be patient. We moved around a bit looking for the perfect spot to catch the different types of fish. I see now how types of bait and lures can make a difference when looking for a good catch. I hope that you have enjoyed seeing what the waters of Port Mansfield has to offer. I see now why so many people love to fish. And don't forget, next time you feel like going fishing, Port Mansfield may be the place to go.